are believed that preserving these books is a worthwhile endeavor. Um, I think that many scholars like to see the original manuscript on some things, but I'm really talking off the top of my head because I'm not a scholar, but those who are have made the decision that these books should be preserved. They should not be discarded. These are books that are not used every day. Excuse me. I'm not talking about discarded. Ma'am, 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 ma'am. Ma 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 talking. That's enough. Okay. Um, the next issue is the preservation. I think that we've all lost sight of the fact that we are preserving 35 out of 45 acres. There are other uses that this land could be put to. I have not done a study to understand what those uses could be, whether it be two houses or 27 houses with roads and yards and all of that stuff. Or, as I think when I watched, the, I was not at the last hearing either, but when I watched the tape of it, that it could be uh, Montgomery Roads, so all of those green houses that are lit up all night. There are all kinds of uses. You, the neighbors may not feel that this is a perfect use, or even a good use, but I think you need to at least consider that 20, uh, I'm sorry, 35 acres will be preserved forever. And those are the 35 acres that are closest to all your homes. And I'm sorry, as I said earlier, I'm not a scholar and I can't remember your first question. <laughs> Why did you decide to build a, a, a bunker just in Hadley instead of thinking in or down I, I think one, of the, one of the plans of, for the well, the hopes of the building were that we can, we know we can't make it invisible, but we, you know, putting windows on it or any other accoutrements is just going to draw attention to it. So if you look at many of those that came around, it's not that visible. Yes, somebody, you know, on, sorry, I forgot your address, but somebody there who looks down could see it. Also sees a, sees a Lane Manor, also sees Home Depot. There's a wonderful mountain in the distance and there are wonderful trees before you get to these sites. I understand that. Um, but as I look at it from a development standpoint, if there's got to be something there, a guarantee of an in perpetuity preservation of 35 acres out of 45, it, it's a compromise, but I think it's not a bad one. Is that so that's it? Next question. Yes, ma'am. Yes, hi. My name is Nancy Bandman Boyle from 17 High Meadow. Hello. Rome. Hello. Um, I probably have um, one of the most direct views right down on it. And um, I, guess, I guess I have to say first off, and I, I just held on to this belief, is that if it's an educational building, why isn't it on a campus? I know that's really a simple point, but why did Amherst College, for example, build a parking lot? And they, they tore down tennis courts and put a parking lot up. And why couldn't UMass, being the biggest, consider a place there? Well, it wasn't, and it isn't. And I understand we're, you're going forward. Um, given that, I guess I have concerns as to how high the building is. I'm not, I've not heard a clear uh, 30, height. The highest is 34 and a half feet. 34 and a half. So it just keeps under 35. It does keep and under 35. And that's with the roof as it is now. Yeah. Okay. The, All right. the smaller part, the um, administrative part, is 24 and a half, 25. And the right. top of the building is 218 feet above sea level. But it's 35, 34 and a half. Okay. 34 and a half. So I guess if in looking at the whole project and in going to the meetings and asking Neil questions and being here last week, I guess I have to say that if I were a spade foot toad, I would be pretty happy. Because these people are coming in, and they're actually going to preserve acreage. Honestly, that's not what's happening now. The land is just barren in terms of any kind of management. And in some ways, it is actually going to become an eyesore if it remains abandoned. I, I really have struggled with this, and I, I, I've really considered this part of it. 
that for the preservation of the land, and even for us as neighbors, this property is actually going to be more productive. It's not going to look great, and I'm, I'm 700 feet away from it. You are um, so, I have to say that. My concern going forward is that it feels to me like there have been inconsistencies throughout the, the, the process in terms of, first we heard, I thought I heard my notes, three or four employees, now there's 12. So that's a change, I think. The classroom. Yep. Okay. 12 is correct, is it not you? 12 is correct. Uh, there, yeah. are, there are offices as well as yeah. okay. work for the library. I just want to make sure I didn't misspeak. Eight bedrooms. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it, it, that, it, it, it was presented in the beginning as simply an annex with a very skeleton crew. And so then the classrooms went from 10 to 12, and now tonight we're hearing that one is for 20 and one is for 10. Okay, 12. so that's still within 30. So that's roughly right. <coughs> the other thing is the safety point of view, especially with some of the rental properties that seem to serve younger people on North Maple, who at times will migrate into that field and have a big party. It's a security concern for all of us. Um, and I really, is, is it really going to be a property without lighting? I mean, I love that idea because I love looking at the stars, but is it really going to be without lighting? Until one of those students moves, then the lights come on. Then the lights come on, right. So I would really, I, I hope that is truly the case. And, you know, I, I also really want to say publicly here that I feel like, and I have not always agreed, but I feel like Neil has made many attempts to listen to our concerns at the meetings. Um, he was gracious enough to come to my house and view my view and then had the architects do one of those um, uh, posters so I could see what it would look like. So I, I have to say that I can think of 20 other terrible uses for that land. And one of them is that if nothing happens, we're going to have, you know, bitter root. We're a sumac problem already, and I think there have been so many attempts to try and make this work. In addition to the fact that the law is already very clear on this, I think. So I appreciate you working with us and trying to make it as good as it can be. That's my two cents. Next question. Anybody else with questions? Okay, second, second. I don't know. I just heard in perpetuity. Wasn't when this land was put into conservation land, wasn't that in perpetuity? 61A. Yeah. Isn't that in perpetuity? No, no. no. 61A can be, uh, they asked for a um, release of the town's right of first refusal under 61A. And they'll have to pay what are called rollback taxes, which are pennies. Uh, but no, this was not in APR. 61A is a agricultural. I you understand that, but I always thought it was based oh, on. Oh, no, it just would, There would be substantial penalties if you pulled it back. No, you pay, pay back taxes. taxes. And is there something in writing that it's in perpetuity, or can they just come back and say, well, we're, as it appears, we're just within the law? Um, like, just, we're a half a foot top, top shorter than the height. We're a half a. Yes, the uh, the short answer is yes. As they've gone through the process, with, especially with natural heritage, they have promised to put binding covenants on the land. They can't do it now because they don't own the land now. But there is, uh, natural heritage is going to require that. I've worked on other projects with them, and they, they follow up on that. You don't get sign-offs until you provide evidence that you've recorded uh, restrictions. And we have a draft of the conservation restriction that was presented to um, Natural Heritage. Like Bill said, it hasn't been executed yet. It is a draft. But it will be, it goes through a state process that, that makes it in perpetuity. As a private citizen, we cannot make it in perpetuity. But if we go through the state process, it will be. And that's what we're doing. Has anybody looked at what the negative impacts on the neighboring property values would be? 
Because I know there's a house for sale on Pine Meadow that was sale pending and it was withdrawn because my understanding was because of the And that's, that's a personal opinion of the people that did that. Okay. We, there's no study done and yours. The study would be probably one of these things like, well, what do you really want it to show? They can slam it that way. Like when it's Mr. Attorney McConnell said in the beginning, it may reduce it, it may make it more valuable. It's, who knows? 35 acres. My, my appointment is 35 acres of preserved land. You know, may make it more valuable. Yeah. I think that property is sold the day after that. Yeah, so, it's sold again. It's going to close next <laughs> yeah. week. Yeah. Yeah. Joyce? Yeah. This, this is a two fold question. Um, I thought there was a bylaw in place about two way accesses to a. No, subdivision. Say that again? If you have a subdivision of houses. Subdivision more only. than what, 10 or 12 houses? Something like yes. that. Okay, so well, it doesn't it's apply it's to no. this property. And the other point was I'm concerned about it being named as a conservation area, as we know, on uh, Old Mountain Road. That's a conservation area. We have traffic issues, we have parking issues. And I see that as a problem for the police department and patrolling and where are they going to park and who's going to monitor them going in and out of the annex. Um, are you going to have your own security there? And is it, are, how is it, I don't want it to impact Rocky Hill Road is what I'm saying. So. I think we will do our best to make sure that doesn't happen. I, I think, and I haven't been involved in this part of it, but I think that the difficulty is you can't say this land is available to neighbors and nobody else. I mean, it's just too hard to regulate. So I don't think we have any intention or desire to advertise to the world that this is available. We will do what the Commonwealth requires under a conservation restriction. And uh, you know, we're not looking to attract people, but what will happen now is that we have a very responsible party who's going to be liable for what's happening on that property. And there's somebody who the police can go to instantly and say, you know, solve this problem. Kind of like Puffer's Pond. Kind of like Puffer's Pond, Peter. Right. Yeah. Kind of like Puffer's Pond. It's not advertised either. <laughs> You're right. But I, I, uh, I, in my heart, believe that Neil and the five colleges will take better care of this than we in Amherst take care of Puffer's Pond. <laughs> will, will, it, will it be posted? Oh. Yeah. Parking at on Rocky yeah. Hill Road. We, we, can, we can't do that. The town can do that. Your property, but you own probably 50 feet on Rocky Hill Road, and the uh -huh. um, and the pavement's probably only 22 feet. Rick might know better than I, but but I can pull off that road, and I've got plenty of room to park a car and still be on town land. But in the answer, if the town was to post it, we certainly wouldn't object. And I don't think we would. We would very definitely discourage uh, any kind of access. Uh, any kind of planned access from Rocky Hill Road, just for that reason. And we in Aquil Heritage are happy to do that also. Other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Tom McGee, uh, Old Mountain Road. Uh, my information came, what was in it? Not here at the last meeting, my information came. Could you speak from, up, please? My information came from reading articles in the Hampshire Gazette of what's going on. And one of the questions that I have is that I'm shocked that this was a four-year study, a four-year study that commenced after the town of Hadley had already made a restriction on the square footage on commercial properties. So they knew about that. I'm also concerned, I would like to know, because uh, Attorney McConnell is always forthcoming, as to what amount of taxpayers' money is involved in this project, because in the media I'm looking at a 12 to $15 million project. Now, five colleges, as the other gentleman said, you know, is a, a non-profit, or the, the law of the Doberman applies to non-profits or for-profit schools on the mix. Who's going to own the property? Is the property going to be owned by five colleges, Inc., or is the property going to be owned by UMass? And as the lady in front of me said, why didn't they look at sites on the other campuses? Because the other campuses have thousands of acres of land that could have been used if they wanted to keep it in the complex. And if they said they couldn't find any place to put it, it only took me 15 minutes to look on the internet and find out that the Commonwealth has paid $5 million to put a UMass Amherst facility at Westover Air Force Base which is one area that they could have gone to, and they could have gone to Holyoke. This property right there in Holyoke in the historic districts, and that this project would benefit the people of Holyoke. 
there are existing buildings that can be retrofitted, or they could have retrofitted the garage at UMass, which is reaching its time when they'd have to restore it or take it down anyway. So that was my concern. How much how much money is involved in this, and what percentage is taxpayers' money? Um, I don't know. I'll try to find out. But let me answer the question that I do know, and that is that five colleges incorporated will own the real estate. They will own the building, and they will manage it. Will the University of Massachusetts make a payment to the town of Hadley in lieu of taxes? I have not spoken to anybody at UMass. Will five my, colleges? My experience in Amherst, the answer is no. Will five colleges incorporated make a payment? No, they have not. <coughs> they have, as I said earlier, they have made contributions to help Hadley with the PBTA expense. They have um, made contributions of fiber optics to the town. And in my opinion, they continue to be a good neighbor. They are a tax-exempt organization. And although some of us might think, well, maybe they should pay more or do something, the fact is that um, they're not really entitled to be giving away the money that is either given to them or which um, comes to them through their charitable purposes. Having said that, once again, there's a lot of spaces out there that I could say, how about this and how about that? It's a specialized use. It requires certain load carrying. It's, it requires certain air conditioning, cooling, and whatnot. So I can't comment on those. I can only say that this is a site after spending a long time looking. This is a site, and a lot of money. This is the site that they selected as serving their needs best and as having a reasonable impact on the ground. Could you have built it underground? Um, don't know. It would take some. It would take some ge geological testing. I would suspect that you can't get far enough underground before you hit groundwater, but I don't know that. So. Thank you, Peter. You're very welcome. Can I Peter. ask a process point? Anybody else? Just a quick process point. What? Can I ask a process point? Oh, what's a process? I forgot no about process. Well, just the, the habitat management plan. Yes. Is that part of the permitting process? Is that yes. going to be in writing? Is that it, going to identify a it conservation? Already, it already group? is. We have a, a conservation management permit is in place. Is that correct, Neil? It's um, in the works. It's going to be the natural heritage who oversees it and would issue the permit. So they're given a management plan of what they would do to manage the parcel for the toad. And the rest is conservation, and we wouldn't touch that. That's oh. the point. Like, okay. There's habitat for the toad, which would be managed, and the rest of the property that's put into conservation would just be left because it's, it's not suitable habitat, or you know, that's why we do it that way. They're only managed in a section for the toad. Okay, so. The entire parcel is being managed. It's really for the state for the only. It is being managed differently. Right. We intend to contract with a local conservation organization to manage, as they do other properties, to manage the, pick a number, 25 acres of just preserved land. They will probably, but I don't want to speak for them, mow the trails. They will take care of it. They will do the things that they always do. Um, pick one, for instance, uh, the Kessler Land Trust. They own a lot of land. Mm -hmm. They manage it. Mm -hmm. uh, five colleges understand that they will need to um, endow a fund mm -hmm. because Kessler doesn't do it for nothing. Mm -hmm. Mount Grace doesn't do it for nothing. Mm -hmm. So they will endow a fund that will produce income to manage this land. The uh, state for toads, the 12 acres that will be managed for them, is under a different permit mm -hmm. from a different agency. Thank there you. is, if you wish, I think somewhere in here we may have a draft of the oh, letter oh. that I can provide you to and look at. Oh, that'd be great. Yep. I'd like to make one more comment, if I may. We have 10 minutes. I hope I can do it in 10 minutes. Better. Uh, <laughs> there was a comment made at the last hearing that I watched, I was not at, 
but in which there seemed to be concern that how can you build a building this big? The town of Hadley doesn't allow a building this big anywhere. Um, I want to point out that that's not exactly correct in that we do allow buildings in the business and commercial zone larger than 75,000 square feet with the transfer of development rights. No, we don't. The bylaw says you do. No, we don't. It doesn't say we do. We were going to propose something like that. No, it's, hold on. Does it, does it matter, Peter? What I was going to say is that it is allowed with TDR um, at the rate of 2,000 square foot of building for acre of TDR land. Show, like to show, like to have you show me where it says that. I'm going to try. Two thousand square feet of parking. No, it's it's a different one for parking than building. I think that's the way I read it. That's something we were going to propose. No, it, it was in the was citizen in bylaw. Um, Got to be under section three, two, or three. It, it's not terribly relevant except to say that with the preservation of certain lands, parking or buildings can be increased. Um, we are preserving 35 acres of land, which would produce, and it's, it's totally up to the board on a special permit. It's not something we can do as a matter of right. But the, the board um, can grant a special permit to allow an extra 2,000 square feet for every acre, and you multiply that 38 and 30 out, it's an additional 70,000 square feet over the 75. So I just want to be clear that there is a process within the town to increase that size. It is not the largest building allowed in town. Um, and that's just say here we've never interpreted it that way oh, and, and we're not doing it I'm just trying to, to show that it's, to it's not as some brownie points here you are exactly correct it's in that chart bill yes I see I see where you are yeah. we're not doing that we didn't ask for a special permit although I did investigate and our lands do qualify pursuant to the... If that, that's, that, oh, but no, you don't, because you're not in the... Uh, We're not in the zone. Not in the zone. No, but my point is not that we can do it. It's that it is not the largest... No. Okay. ...that is allowed. A very fine point, but it seemed to me in watching the last meeting that that was a point with the board that, gee, it's bigger than any building that could ever be allowed here. And the point is, it may be the biggest building that you would ever permit, but not that's allowed under the bus. Will it be in writing that they can't um, do something from Rocky Hill Road? Would it be in writing that they can't do an access road? Yeah, that, that, that would all be part of the approval. Um, if it when, it when it comes to that, okay. that, you know, not access from Rocky Hill Road, to find the signage on Rocky Hill Road. Um, okay. That's really the best that they can do, that we can require for them, is to make sure that they're in. They don't want it either, so it wouldn't be a problem, um, because they don't want access from Rocky Hill in a town, because of the potential traffic issues, do not want to do that. We don't want to encourage that. If anybody's going to be, they're going to have to figure a way down a you know, we'll figure that one out if there's going to be any kind of a... We propose to have some sort of a gate here. Yes. Nine access during yes. nine office hours. Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So what are the proposed hours of operation for the facility? Traditional business hours, 8 to 5, something like that. And even in the wintertime when it's dark at 4, um, we have the option and the plan is that the parking lot will not be lit, but when you drive in, it will light, or when you leave the building to go to your car, it will light. So we're, we're trying to keep the, the light intrusion down, and I believe there are no lights on the building. You know, down, like a lot of buildings have lights at the corners, of them, but we don't have those. Instead, we have infrared cameras for security purposes. Okay, so... We have one more question, if you want. 
Yes, ma'am. Just a quick point of clarification. Did the access road, we talked about last time about getting a letter from the police approving only one, and the fire only having one access? Say the end of the fire, the fire chief. Did we get that? Yeah. So they're okay with just having the fire, the fire chief said that the, the single access from Rock from North Maple Street is adequate. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, so a couple things. I think Joel's idea of flying some kind of balloons would be a good one for the four corners of where the building would be. Yeah. How big would the balloons be, you know? <laughs> My, whatever's adequate to see. Horizon uh, does it all the time with their towers. I'm not sure landscaping is going to do anything for that building because it's already surrounded by. Oh, okay. You're showing the building right now. Could on that plan without showing the landscaping, could you kind of show what you're going to clear cut and what will be left for brush and scrub? How's a better that a better way to say it? I can't do that. No, obviously. Well, yeah. I might be. Yeah, I'm okay. quite limited. <laughs> right? Okay. You want to say what I'm asking? Yeah, you want to know where there would be. In other words, you're going to clear cut, cut so much area to put the, for construction, and you're going to leave the remaining trees, shrubs, scrubs, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just kind of, I'm not asking to show a detailed plan of what they are, but just kind of show where you're going to clear cut and where you're not. Okay. There's a number of experts, so I, I, I we will do what we can do, yeah. but in, if you want definitive, general, we'll get it. We're just going to clear the, the roadways, strip the soil coming in through here. Uh, in the beginning, this module one that's being built, just clear right around the module one, everything from the fire road in. The limit of grading right there is a limit of disturbance. Okay. And that's the only area that's being done. But then in addition to that, under Vale's uh, management program, this area through here will be restored in habitat for the toad. And this area through here, this darker green, will be left as is. What does restored habitat mean? It means like right now there's a, a number of invasive species out there, and it's not great toad habitat. So okay. we're trying to improve that by removing the invasives. So they would want, maybe at the beginning they come in, they cut down down certain invasive species or the invasives, anything native would be left. Um, and then they would replant native plants in a manner that would be suitable for toad habitat. So, so, so all of the light green area you're talking before you do that? That's going to be, well, there's wetlands over here, so we're well, obviously... I guess what I'm asking yeah. is, could you show us, bring in sure. for next this, time... Yep, that swath, that yeah. swath, yeah. Okay. And through in uh, here. I, and I, towards that's, the, that's my point. Could yeah. you bring in next time, and not in sure. great detail, but just kind of shade it where you're going to be doing something? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Were there any barns or farm structures on that property previous? I don't believe so. They're down. Nothing. They're down, but do yeah. you think that... Could have been contamination between those properties, dumping oil out of tractors or whatever. There is no question that someone like Five Colleges Inc. has to be very careful of that. And if there's a chance of a contamination, I am certain that their uh, real estate lawyer is going to be looking carefully at that. Just like the EPA, will they be as careful? Yeah, as the EPA? exactly like that. Mm -hmm. um, that's really all I could think of. What we want to see. Extra details. Anybody else have anything? So no. when on that issue of where the cutting, you want to know um, in the selective um, invasive species removal, you want to know what's being removed. Nope. Okay. No, I don't. Not looking for a lot of detail. Just kind of. You could just say invasive species. I'm not. I mean, you you could spend actually, days actually getting detailed on it, that. Which I can submit here for your benefit. I don't have a larger one to show everyone, but this is where the manager, if you can see this yellow, is where nothing okay. would take place. This lighter color here is where we would manage. Okay. There's vernal pools and wetlands here, which we won't want to touch so that the toads can use that habitat. And we don't want to cut the trees up here because we right. don't want to impact the vernal pool area okay. or the area around it. So we're basically managing this area here for invasives and replanting natives and things of that nature. Okay, so th this plan just blown up would be fine. Okay. Great. Okay. Yep. Do you want 
those rolls have these in them? Do you want them on the, the boards left here? Is it easier for you, or do you want us to? Take no, them? we we okay. The, the, the miniature plans that we've got. If you just leave them there, we're just going to get dust in our room. You just need to be thrown out. Um, anything else on the board? Any ideas? Want to see?